Hello. I previously talked about how to stop fighting against depression by simply saying, I'm depressed and that's okay. I'm going to follow up that with why would you do that? Why would you stop fighting against being depressed? And it's sort of a trick question because you don't actually stop fighting against it. What you do is you shift how you're fighting against it and what you're fighting against. And this is sort of really a quick and easy way to think about this is that emotions give us power through electro, elect, electrical impulses, chemical urges, and that makes us feel in a certain way. Depression weighs us down. Anxiety, walking on eggshells. Anger, you want to explode. So part of it is if you believe emotions give us power, then it makes sense to really look at emotions as a resource in our lives. And how we deal with them and manage them isn't by fighting against it. As an example, suppose you see a rock and you say to yourself, I'm going to fight against this rock. That doesn't really make sense. You don't say to yourself, I'm going to fight against water or I'm going to fight against the sunshine. I don't want sunshine. I don't like sunshine. I'm going to fight against it. That makes no sense because we know a rock water, sunshine, they don't have intelligence. They're not going to give us any directions or guidance or insight. It's just what it is. Likewise, suppose you have a gun or a knife or alcohol. That alcohol doesn't give you insights. That gun does not give you insights. You choose how you're going to use those resources. Sometimes it can be skillfully, sometimes not skillfully. It can be overwhelming. It can be difficult. All of those things are true, but a gun does not give you insights. Alcohol does not give you insights. It changes your skills, your inhibitions, your beliefs, your values, your experiences, memory, many things. But it doesn't give you insights. Likewise, when you fight against your depression, it's not giving you any insights. And the harder you fight about it, the more you realize that it's going to keep being there. However, when you stop fighting and say, I'm depressed and that's okay. Just like when people say, I'm an alcoholic and that's okay. Or when people deal with sexual offense and abuses, they say, I'm a sexual abuser. And that's who I am. And that's what I need to deal with. I am abusive and I need to deal with that. And so partly is when you say, I'm depressed, and that's okay. It just means that is how you're feeling. And so when you stop fighting against that, and you accept that as part of your history, your values, your beliefs, your experiences, then you can actually shift and say, how now can I reduce depression? Where is it coming from? What values? What beliefs? What experiences? What relationships? What history? What age? And so partly is that is why once we stop fighting our depression and know how to accept it as part of who we are, the why is that we want to make our lives better and we don't make our lives better by denying our lives, by denying part of our lives. Doesn't help. And so it's a small shift, but that's how we can start moving forward to really reduce how depression impacts our lives. So that's the why of why you would stop fighting depression. Moving forward, it's going to be important to really look at what some of the skills we can develop to reduce depression and how we can approach it in different ways and where that's coming from. So I look forward to exploring that with you as we move forward in discussions on mental health and the BCA holistic approach. Thank you very much. Have a great day.